Live from the Delta Center in Salt Lake City, it's International Hockey League action with the Red Hot San Diego Gulls against the Pacific Division Salt Lake Golden Eagles. Hi everybody, I'm Mike Barak and welcome to the Delta Center. It being Friday the 13th, Coach Bob Francis already has some bad news from earlier today. His two leading point scorers were called up to the Calgary Flames, leading scorer Patrick LeBeau and his team's leading scorer from last year, Sean Hafey. And that's going to make it even more difficult for the Salt Lake Golden Eagles because the San Diego Gulls have the top record in the International Hockey League. They're 13-0-1, already a 14-point lead over Salt Lake in the Pacific Division of the IHL. So the Golden Eagles will have it tough here tonight. Joining me in the broadcast, former National Hockey Leaguer, former Golden Eagle Dave Herakasi. Dave, welcome to the broadcast tonight. Thank you, Michael. San Diego Gulls, 16 players with NHL experience, over 4,000 games played. San Diego very, very strong defensively. If they have any weak points, it could be their forwards and their goaltending. Well, one uh, non-weakness for Salt Lake will be their goaltending. Andre Trefiloff ranks second in the IHL in goals against average, and early this season has been brilliant. Andre Trefiloff, just one week ago, 52 saves. Unbelievable, a stellar performance. Well, the Eagles, Trefiloff will have his work cut out because the Gulls have the top offense in the IHL, and they're led by the leading scorer in the International League, former NHLer Hubie McDonough. Hubie McDonough, a very slick skating forward. When he gets the opportunity around the net, he never misses. Dave, what's the key for the Golden Eagles here tonight? Salt Lake has got to play aggressive. They cannot let the uh, swift skating forwards for uh, San Diego move unattended. They've got to knock them down at every opportunity. We'll see if the Eagles can do that here tonight. It's the International Hockey League, the Salt Lake Golden Eagles and the San Diego Gulls. All the action coming right up. Testing one, two, testing one, two, three. Testing. Testing one, two, testing one, two, three. That'll be good. Right there. Is that room for you? Welcome to the Delta Center in Salt Lake City. It's the Salt Lake Golden Eagles against the number one team in the IHL to start off, the independent San Diego Gulls. I'm Mike Barak. Joining me in just a moment, former Golden Eagle Dave Herekasi. Golden Eagles look for a victory, and they'll try and do it with Andre Trefloff here tonight. Only one loss in regulation all season long. The second best goals against average in the league at 2.26. Welcome, Dave Herekasi, and Trefloff will have his work cut out tonight. Sean Hafey, Patrick LeBeau are gone, and the Gulls have the best offense, the best power of play in this league. Well, tonight, like you said, the work's definitely cut out for the Golden Eagles. They've got to step it up a notch tonight, big time. Players that you don't necessarily see contribute a lot out there, they need to play tonight. 
Alex Nikolak with an arm injury, Paul Holden out for Solik, in addition to LeBeau and Hafey who were called up. Wayne's younger brother, Keith Gretzky, along with Alan Heppel, who was traded earlier this week. Jean-Marc Richard out with a knee injury. Former Golden Eagle Steve Martinson also scratched tonight for San Diego. The goals are loaded. They have extra players on the roster. The Calgary Flames are in a big road trip. And as a result of some injuries there and some disappointments up front, they've called up LeBeau and Hafey. So not only did the Golden Eagles lose Wednesday night 3-2, Dave, against this goals team, but here tonight, they're facing a team with a lot of offense and room to improve because although the goals beat Salt Lake 3-2 Wednesday, they felt they could have played a little bit better. There's no question. I thought that the aggressive style of play that we normally see from Salt Lake wasn't evident on the Wednesday night. Tonight, for the Eagles to have a successful triumph, they've got to play solid, play well in their own zone, and play extremely well when they get that opportunity in the San Diego end. We touched on it on the open. The goals have more experience than any other club in the IHL, over 4,000 man games in the National Hockey League, and another one of their veterans will be in goal tonight. We'll see him throughout the broadcast. It will be Clint Malarchuk. They're introducing the Golden Eagles on the ice here. It is the special veterans uh, night uh, game here as veterans and the military personnel getting a little bit of a discount here tonight at the Delta Center. Friday the 13th, the goal's looking for their 13th win of the year. They're 13-0-1 in the early uh, portion of the season and their captain Lindy Ruff along with former Golden Eagle Peter uh, Perry Anderson boy they are are loaded and there's a reason why they're 13-0-1. Well they've got so much experience as I mentioned uh, over 4,000 games played between 16 players on the team and uh, it makes it tough for the opposing teams with uh, all the moxie and all the smartness that these uh, particular players can show. Well the Golden Eagles, Andre Trefilov, as the Eagles uh, players are being introduced here at the Delta Center. This is the third meeting between the two teams this year. The Gulls have won both the first two games, winning by scores uh, uh, five to two and three to two. They've outscored so like eight four. But this has always been a pretty good series. Way back at the Western Hockey League, and Dave, you played for the Golden Eagles against the Gulls in the old Western League. Clint Millardshock, former Buffalo Sabre, along with Lindy Ruff and Gord Deneen on defense. Andre Treffeloff with Wortman and Stolk on the back line. Brost, Cruz, and Clank for Salt Lake, a checking line. The Gulls have also a checking unit out with Mitch Lamoureux, veteran of the NHL, with uh, Denny Lambert and former Golden Eagle, Perry Anderson. Again, the color guard on the ice here tonight at the Delta Center, the special veterans night a couple of days late. They will have a special presentation during the game this evening and a tribute to the members who have fought and have been involved in altercations for this country. It's the Salt Lake Golden Eagles and the San Diego Gulls. A good crowd expected here at the Delta Center, the lower bowl, very well filled here tonight. And uh, they look uh, to uh, get that a little bit going uh, further as this night uh, progresses. The Eagles right now at 6-7 and won a victory here tonight would move them back to the 500 mark. Let's pause now for the playing of our national anthem. job on our national anthem here at the Delta Center the Salt Lake Golden Eagles 6-7-1 second place in the Pacific Division and the San Diego Gulls 13-0-1 
first place overall, not only in the division, but overall in the International Hockey League. Bob Francis has his work cut out tonight. His top two scorers up in Calgary. Well, no question, uh, the linesman, the referee for tonight, uh, Mark Wilkins, the linesman, Tim Brown, and Steve Metcalf. Yeah, and uh, as we mentioned, uh, Wilkins uh, will uh, be the referee, but a tough assignment for Coach Bob Francis. Well, Bobby Francis has especially spent all day long on trying to get his strategies together. Uh, both players getting called up uh, around noon today, and I'm sure that's uh, throwing a little monkey into the monkey wrench into his plans. Mark Wilkins in his seventh year in the IHO, but only second as a referee. He was born in Fort Wayne. Will drop the puck. Clint Malarchuk, four games. He's 2 0 1 with a 4.33. 338 National Hockey League games to his credit. Calgary Pro and Calgary native Todd Gross will draw up for Salt Lake. And we're underway here at the Delta Center. And immediately Salt Lake gained possession. And up the left wing side, it's the defenseman Wortman plays to the blue line. Goals able to chip it into the Salt Lake zone. And whirling back is Kevin Wortman, the second year Golden Eagle backliner. On left wing for uh, Paul Cruz, it's out of his reach. Matt Scramble at center, and it is Gord Denine, who scored five assists in a game last week in the IHO in a game against Kalamazoo, able to play it to the Salt Lake Blue Line, and the Eagles Bros able to muscle it right back into San Diego territory. 32-year-old Lindy Ruff on the left wing side is their captain, takes the hit, it's wound to center, and then Salt Lake back it up, back behind the goal, and the goals play the puck. Early on, 40 seconds gone into the first. Just underway, Eagles against the pace-setting goal. And here's Thomas Forslund, a native of Sweden, able to play the puck into the neutral zone for Todd Harkins back into the center position tonight and cleared right back in. Harkins had played the right side for much of the season and preserves, or I should say, prefers the center position. And so they control the puck into the neutral zone. Harkins over skates and the goals. Play it free on the right wing side. Shank ahead of the play. However, is John Anderson offside. So a very slow start to this game. Well, so far, both teams a little tentative, but what I like, the positive so far, is that the Golden Eagles are playing a little more aggressive. They're definitely taking the body. Very absent in Wednesday night's contest. Yeah, they really uh, allow the goals at times to maneuver into the offensive zone. The San Diego goals play back in the old Western League. This is their third year back in the IHL. They Missed the playoffs two years ago and then had a 31 point improvement last year, went 45 and 28 and had 99 points and a great improvement in their second season. And obviously, they've improved on that this year with their perfect 13 0 and 1 mark. Here's the play at center. The Eagles wind it to the San Diego defense and Don McSween, who scored the winner Wednesday night, checked in the play. Dillingham does dump it in the slot. Matt to try in front of the goal, but finally it's cleared by the goals to center and Udeen able to wind it right back in. Early on, first period, no score. I doubt you'll see a lot of goals here tonight with Trefilov against Malarchuk. And Udeen twirls back at his own defense. Here is the native of Russia, able to clear it on the opposite side for Rich Chernomaz. Just missing the linesman, Tim Brown, clears it back at the goal. Icing is the call with a minute 56 gone into the first. No score between the Eagles and the San Diego Gulls. We'll be right back in just a moment. I want to talk a couple of years or a few years okay. ago because it definitely didn't happen last year. Did they not tell the referee? Shoot. We're back to action here at the Delta Center. The Eagles and the goals in a scoreless game. Here's Robbie Nichols. Swings it right back of the goal. It's the goals. Drop it back to Dale DeGray, the former Calgary Flame, but he's unable to control it. It hops over his stick. And here's the ex-Buffalo Sabre, Malarchuk, able to play it free on the right side. Dale DeGray, head man's into the neutral zone. Robbie Nichols, long shot off his stick. And up uh, back of the goal. And a total of 238 gone, first period. No score. Faceoff will come back out inside the blue line to the left of Andre Trefilon. Well, the Golden Eagles uh, against the San Diego Gulls, as mentioned uh, tonight, 
the third meeting between the two teams. Bob Francis in his fourth year behind the bench and a real uh, test for him here tonight is he's really had to mix up his lines. Well, he's really, like you say, he's changed up a lot of the players. You got Harkins playing center, which is the first time I've seen that all year. We have a line now of uh, Paul Cruz, Todd Brost, and Kerry Clark on the right side as the play now back of the net. Guy trying to push off a San Diego player. In deep to fourth check is the forward Peter Hankinson, and they dump it in front, and the goaltender truffle off with the pounce on top and holds on. Well, uh, on Wednesday night, the Eagles were had a tough time on the boards and in the corners. Uh, San Diego created so much confusion. The Eagles have to keep that puck on the outside of the surface. They've got to throw it up on the glass, get that puck out. They cannot enable the, the very experienced defenseman on San Diego to get that good shot. Face off deep to the right of the goal. The voice of Dave Herrick as he played in the National Hockey League with the California Golden Seals and the Cleveland Barons, two teams that are now defunct in the National Hockey League. Dave didn't help that, however, as they play it right back behind the goal, and Stoke winds it free on the wing, and Paul Cruz able to wind it for Kerry Clark. This is the big, rough, tough line with Cruz and Clark on the wings. A very skillful and checking type center. It's grossed up the middle. Here's the play on the wing, and the goals wind it free on right wing. The dangerous Hankinson into the neutral zone, leads it for the veteran Denise. Left wing side, Perry Anderson has shot, and a kick save treffle off. They'll need him to be sharp tonight. Play back of the goal into the Salt Lake in, and Stoke just rims it all the way down deep into the goal's territory. It, skipper, it skitters on edge back after it rough and ice icing is the call. Score, no score between the Eagles and the goals. This is Salt Lake Golden Eagles hockey. Brian, do you want me to use the uh, allied thing eventually? Face off coming up to the left of the Salt Lake goal. No score between Salt Lake and San Diego. The Eagles right now in second place in the division with a win tonight could move back to the 500 mark. Here's the play back of the goal. Kevin Melrose rims it on the left wing side, and Thomas Forslund just flies it deep into the goal zone. This might be another icing. Back after Holder icing is the call. The third icing. straight icing, and Dave, when the Eagles are inside center and cleared all the way down, the opposite team touches it. They'll bring a faceoff back into the defensive zone, and uh, Hubie McDonough, the leading point scorer in the IHL, with 28 points. McDonough played in the NHL with the New York Islanders and the Los Angeles Kings, a five-point lead over Jock Callender and Ken Priestley, along with Keith Osborne, so three players tied with 23, and McDonough already with 28 in only 14 games. He's averaging two points per game. Here's Shadeen on the right side for Tim Harris. Winds it all the way free. Malarchuk sets it up to the side of the goal. Eagles, Harkins trying to dig it free. And the play back of the net. Harris for the Golden Eagles. Trying to muscle up with McDonough. The play back of the net. Harris trying to play it free to the right of the goal. Backs it up for Todd Harkins. Harkins now trying to play it along the boards. Porcelain trying to dig it free. Here is Thomas Porcelain who played in the the, uh, for the Swedish national team in the Goodwill games in Seattle a couple of years ago, but he's tripped up, no call. He looks back up. Wilkins lets it fly. Here's the play on the left wing side. Goal's trying to center one, but Melrose just plays it deep into the goal zone, and you can see the strategy already, Dave. The Eagles just ice the puck rather than worry about it in their own end. Well, they're definitely trying to play a much more defensive style of game tonight than it was evident on Wednesday. Here's Gillingham on the left wing side. Plays for the all-time leading goal scorer in the franchise history. Rich Turnham has a shot at the flex wide. Todd Gillingham fiercely in a four check. They fight for it to the top of the circle, and Robbie Nichols leads it to free to center. And the goals play the puck for Anderson on the wing. Sergei Starikov for Nichols, bouncing in the slot. But Stoke takes it away and works out for the Golden Eagles. Left wing for Gillingham, but a two-line offside. The pass coming from inside the Salt Lake blue line to the awesome. goal side of center. So already we've seen three icings and a two-line pass. Well, the Eagles, I'll tell you, they're jumping. And you're seeing these offsides. And they're trying to jump on these loose pucks. They're trying to make things happen. That's very positive. I'm sure Bobby Francis is happy. Dave, maybe for some of the newer fans, uh, you can't pass it over to Two lines? Definitely not. You, you've got to have the puck ahead of the blue line. You cannot cover two lines. 
Face off controlled into the neutral zone and the goals wind it right back in. Stoke and Wortman on defense. Stoke scored his first goal of the season on a real whipper in the game Wednesday night. Here's Stoke now trying to maneuver free. It's poked at the last moment by Dale DeGray, but Chernemaz able to play at the center. Robbie Nichols takes a hit and Stoke recovers on the right side. Wortman, he himself plays it deeper to the San Diego zone and DeGray has to go back. Here's the play at the defense, and DeGray plays for Robbie Nichols at center, Larry Floyd. Right side for DeGray, across the line. DeGray shooting one. That caroms off the backboards and wide. Gross trying to dig it free. It's fought for on the far hash. Mark Judeen fighting off with Scott Arneal, another former Buffalo Sabre, and Melrose on left wing. Plays for Cruz. The drink wide pass for Clark. In across the line, Terry Clark. Stick handles and on goal, but he lost the puck at the last moment. And Clark looked like a nifty goal scorer as he worked into the San Diego zone. Perry Anderson too well checked, and the goals play the puck. So close checking early on, Dave. 6-14 gone into the scoreless game. That's a very solid part of uh, Salt Lake's game so far tonight is their aggressive play. Here's the play on the right defense. Judine trying to work it free, but Clark at center ice uh, leads it free into the neutral zone. And David St. Pierre, a rookie, able to play it right back into the goal zone. He's played sparingly this season. And for St. Pierre, only his third game of the year. He had tremendous stats in junior hockey. Here's Stoke back for Solik. Try to make a play to the left of the goal. Guy trying to dig it free. They fight for it to the left of the net. And David St. Pierre out of his own end. Drops it for Kevin Guy. Whirls it free on the opposite side, but not out holder. A shot in front. Trefloff uses that goal stick to poke it away. And McCarthy on right wing able to muscle it to center. And Don McSween back after it for the San Diego goal. On the left wing side is McSween losing. McCarthy trying to jam it free. Loose to the side of the goal. And the goals play it free on right wing. Here's Holder at center to Shank. He's not flying. There's going to be a penalty. Daniel Shank called down. And Mark Wilkins will call our first minor penalty. A hooking call coming up against Salt Lake. Well, Rich Chernemaz uh, getting victimized on the blue line. Uh, as you can see, Chernemaz is just coming back, back checking on Shank. And Shank takes kind of a fall. That's about a 9.5 if we had some judges. Once well, this again. year in the IHL, you'll get uh, called for an intentional dive, but in Mark Wilkins' eyes, as he tripped down, as Chernomaz knocked him, he felt that Chernomaz got the stick on him. Well, the tough thing for Wilkins, there was five or six different bodies that were right grouped in close together, so, but I definitely think Shank took a nice little dive there. On the Eagles, Chernomaz, a hooking call, 7.20 the time, goals go in the power play. The best power play percentage in the IHL. Well, and Rich Chernemez, that's tough for Bobby France because Chernemez is such an excellent penalty killer when he's on the ice. Well, the Eagles have done a nice job in the penalty killing department, 18.6%, as the goals with a 30.9% of the power play, 30 goals, a tremendous mark with the man advantage. Here's the plane across the line. They scored one Wednesday night against Salt Lake. Former Philadelphia Flyer Mitch Lamaru holds the puck. Here's Lamaru, plays to the side of the goal as the goals try and poke it free. It's the score. It's a power play goal. May have been deflected by Lamaru. It was shot from the point. 7.43 gone. Goals won. Eagles nothing. Well, San Diego just working that puck around on the outside. And finally, they just pass the puck. Deneen gets Deneen, yeah, the nice pass on the boards here. And Deneen gets the puck. He takes a low shot that gets redirected by Lamaru between the legs of a surprise Trefiloff. Trefiloff. Again, not much of an opportunity. Good, good pass back to Deneen, and Deneen just wastes no time in that low shot. Good for deflections, tough on a goaltender. It will be Mitch Lamaru who scores the goal. Well, they give the assist to Scott Arneal. Gordon Ean, the assist. Lamaru scores the goal. They have another new public address announcer here tonight. Greg Rubel absent from the scene and icing is the call for Lamaru on the season, his ninth of the year, his fourth power play goal, and no way uh, Trefiloff's gonna make that save as it was deflected in front. Well, I'll tell you, you know, as we talk about the experience on the San Diego goal team, it is so vital for the Eagles to try to neutralize that. You've gotta, you've gotta play the body, and it was evident on that particular power play that they just got control of the puck, moved it around the outside, set it up, and just waited until they got that good scoring opportunity, and it came. San Diego, an independent team in this league, one of four, Milwaukee, Fort Wayne, and Cincinnati being the others. They've gone out, picked up some players, including
including this Mitch Lammer, who scored the goal. Players that have played in the National Hockey League. He played briefly with Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, and they put together a solid team. Uh, Rick Dudley, their coach, feels that they could beat some of the lower echelon National Hockey League teams. They surely could beat the Ottawa Senators, who only have one win this year in the NHL. Here's the play at the right wing point. Kevin Guy shots. Gift save by Malarchuk and clear to center. This is the same Malarchuk that played with the Buffalo Sabres. Dave Ferencasi will relay a story about a freak injury for him. Fortunate right now just to be alive. Here's the play at the right defense and Kevin Guy on the right side for Tim Harris. At center ice for the Cleveland native, Todd Harkins. Poke checked at the blue line and then wound right back to center where Kevin Guy has to go back. Here's Guy for the Golden Eagles, able to work out of there into the neutral zone. Floats it right back into San Diego territory. And Lindy Ruff, with 691 NHL games experience to his credit, works out of there. Right side for the former Fort Wayne Comet, Peter Hankinson. Cruz levels him against the boards. Clank breaks after it, but the goals wind it to center. Wortman tries to catch it, paw it down. Goals break back. Perry Anderson, who is now living in Salt Lake, able to play it to the Salt Lake defense. And the Eagles' Wortman just flies it high in the air. And a break for Clark. One man back into the goal zone as Cruz on his left, but Clark is tied up in the play. Now back of the goal, Clark skated off, and the goal's rough on right wing. Over skates for the moment, trying to wind it free into the neutral zone. Gross back for Sulik, lifts it right back in. Close checking here. The score, 1-0. San Diego, a power of play goal. Eagles throws now to the top of the circle, swings it back to the net, and Malarchuk trying to set it up. Cruz for the Golden Eagles, bats it behind the goal. Clark trying to dig it free, one to the blue line. Workman holds it in momentarily, and the goals just fly it to center. And this is the first time they'll be called for an icing. Workman back after icing is the call. The score, one nothing, San Diego in the first. We'll come back with more. This is Salt Lake Golden Eagles hockey. Okay. Fans don't miss the grand opening at Allied's new West Valley store. The fun starts on November 19th with team appearances by Golden Eagle players. Take advantage of low bargain prices and win Golden Eagle tickets at Allied, where if we don't have it, you don't need it. Here's the play to the back of the goals. The goals able to clear it free to the center ice area. And Kevin Guy able to whip it right back behind the goal. Early on, first period, the team with the best record of the IHL. Leading 1-0 in a power play goal here against the Salt Lake Golden Eagles, depleted with the loss of their two big scorers in LeBeau and Hafey. And the play back of the goal, it is McSween on the left wing side. Headman's into the neutral zone, and Shank down the right side. Former Detroit Red Wing moving in front of center one. Eagles Struch breaks it up, and the Eagles uh, rookie able to play it to center, but not off the puck at the last moment. There's going to be a penalty coming up against Salt Lake. Although they were on the offense, as soon as the Eagles touch the puck, we'll have a stop to play and a penalty. It looks like a holding call in front. The second straight power play coming up for the goals. And Dave, this has been a problem all season. Believe it or not, coming into this game, a differential of 37. 37 more power plays for the opposition. The score, 1-0 goals. They'll go on the power play. This is Salt Lake Golden Eagles hockey. Two minutes for a holding step. Number 16, first turn has two minutes for a holding step. Penalty comes at 10 Rich Chernema has two for holding the stick at 10.32. San Diego's second power play. The music people here playing Looney Tunes in regards to that last call by the referee, Mark Wilkins. It was a holding the stick penalty and a new rule in professional hockey. Here's the play on left wing and Don McSween whips it right back into the Salt Lake zone. They scramble for it to the blue line and the goals with this tremendous power play work it free. 
Harrison forced him to kill it off, and Salt Lake's Harris freezes down the left wing side, but beaten by the player at his own defense, Don McSween, on left wing. Here's McSween out of Michigan State University, college player, able to work it free on the right side for Gordon Dean, the former Indianapolis checker in the Central League. Right side, Arneal a shot. Treffle off to save it. May have grazed off the crossbar after he got a glove on it. Now the net knockoff, it's uh, Moorings in the Salt Lake zone, but a dangerous scoring play for San Diego. Just an, just an unbelievable shot. As you see, the San Diego forward comes across. He makes the pass, and wasting no time, Nichols takes the shot, and just an unbelievable glove hand save by, uh, by Trefloff on a play. I mean, Scott Arneal took the shot. Just a, a great, great save by Trefloff. He didn't know where the puck was, and he was able to, by some good defensive play by the defenseman of the Eagles, uh, be able to smother it. Good Scott, job. Scott Arneal, a veteran of the National Hockey League. He has played 730 NHL games with the Winnipeg Jets, Buffalo Sabres, and Boston Bruins. And Trefiloff, boy, he made 52 saves in a game against Milwaukee, but he's going to face a lot of dangerous scoring chances here tonight with the Eagles in this situation without their big scoring attack. Here's the play to the right wing point, Dale DeGray. He's the anchor on this power play. Works against Brost, plays it to McDonough to the right wing side for the goals forward McDonough to the top of the circle 35 year old John Anderson plays in front of the goal tipped away beautifully by Stolk. Stolk trying to play aggressive along the boards and John Anderson beats cross ice for Holder his shot Jerem's wide they fight for it to the luck of the goal Anderson drop past the gray shoots he missed the target Holder now for San Diego Hands it free on the far side. McDonough drops for Holder. Right side to Gray. Great puck possession by the goal. Holder, a whipper, and that deflects wide. McDonough taken out of the play, but DeGray pinching in. Boy, the goals maintain the possession to the side of the goal. To the right wing point, Anderson. Shoot, pad save, treffle off. Right point to Gray. Losing, and it pops outside the blue line in a break day for Solent. Great break for the Golden Eagles. The pressure immense by San Diego. Here is Shank now and across the line. Right side for John Anderson. Surveys the traffic. Plays to the side of the goal. That's it in the penalty. At the point to Gray is shot. Stick save. Treffle off. As the goals wheel it back of the goal. Fans are quiet here as the puck in the deeper into the Salt Lake zone. And the Eagles have no other choice but to ice it. That tells you the kind of pressure into the Salt Lake zone. Back after Holder. And icing is the call. 1-0 goal. This is Salt Lake Golden Eagles hockey. Into it. I'm into it. How are we signing, okay? I'm into it, Brian. I'm into it. I'm into it. They're finally watching the light, though, thank God. I'll get it at the next one. I don't have it. Mike Barak alongside Dave Perekasi here at the Delta Center to score one nothing goals. Here is Salt Lake's Chernomaz trying to wind it free. They fight for it to the left of the goal. And now back to the left wing side. Ruff shoots. Treffle off a glove save. And Davey held on as Ruff let it fly from the point. Ruff. Rick Dudley, uh, I'm sure, is pretty happy with his play of his defenseman so far. I mean, they just keep on getting that puck at that point. They're capitalizing on all the little bad mistakes that the Eagles are throwing the puck on the boards. He's, they're picking them up, getting those great shots. Trefloff with a great glove hand save on that high shot by Lindy Ruff. Here is the play at the point again as the goals wheel it free. Well, on the far side and another stop, and it looks like we're going to have a penalty. It looks like a holding call on the near side and let's see what this is all about as Wilkins skates to the penalty box. I think on the particular play one of the San Diego forwards uh, got caught uh, uh, just holding the stick to the side of Trefiloff and finally we get that call against San Diego. I mean uh, it's, it's so tough on Danny Lambert getting whistled off for for a holding uh, but the Eagles have been kind of behind the eight ball that experience really showing for San Diego at this point of the game. It's Denny Lambert the holding the stick penalty. So the second holding the stick penalty in this game, they have holding flash, but it's actually holding the stick. That's a lot of writing on those graphics for our television watchers. Boy, I tell you, I watched one game uh, this year in, uh, in the NHL, and there was three calls for holding in the last five minutes of a contest, in a very close contest. 
Here is the play back of the goal. Salt Lake on the power play, 10 for 76, a miserable 13%. They've not really capitalized on the power play this season. That's been one of their sore spots. Here's the play on the opposite wing. Goals trying to work it free. Salt Lake's Chernomaz also there, and finally San Diego whip it all the way down into the Salt Lake zone. Well, right now it's imperative that the Eagles definitely set up and make those good, crisp passes, get that puck in the zone, create the good, high percentage scoring opportunity. As you saw, the goals, best in the league in the uh, penalty killing department, so Lake 11th of 12 in the power play department. Here's Shudin now for Salt Lake, left wing for Gillingham, chips it right back into the San Diego territory. And McSween clears, but stole it away. Chernomaz trying to center one. Back to the left wing point, Udine. Shoots, he scores! No, they rule no goal. It, may have, it looked like it bounced inside the crossbar and bounced out. The red light never went on. That definitely went in. I could see that puck. It just caromed around the back of the pipe and off the crossbar and back out. Here's Trooch down the right side. We'll argue later as play continues. Here's Trooch now centers. Udine, a shot! Oh, well, Larchuk a pad save. Play back of the gold. Nichols for the goals, trying to work it free. And Floyd on left wing, able to scoop it deep into the Salt Lake zone because they're shorthanded. If you're in a shorthanded situation, you're allowed to ice that puck, but it sure looked like Udine had tied the game. Here's the play on the right side. Guy, able to hit Mana, pass for Strooch. Bangs it right back behind it. McDonough, uh, I should say, Malarchuk uh, plays it. Goals trying to work it free. And Melrose winds it to the Right of the goal, back to the left wing point for Strooch. Shoots, that caroms wide at the right point. Dry now, swings it to the opposite side. Harkins uh, for uh, Sandy McCarthy. As the penalty winding down, that's it. Teams are at even strength at the point. Melrose shoots, and hit a player in front and bounces awry. A three on one break for the goal. Here's Lambert on the right side, but a penalty back of the play as Strooch was tripped up in front of Malarcha. Well, it's David Struch on the play, creating a lot of havoc for uh, Clint Malarchuk in the net. And Malarchuk just cross-checked him and knocked him to the ice. We look well, back on that scoring play with Udine taking the shot, and Dave, it was up high. It was definitely under the crossbar. Look at the way that puck is bouncing around. That hit the pipe under the crossbar and back out of the net. Take another look at it as Udine let it fly. Look at that nice high shot. It's inside the net. That puck went inside the net and came back out. Incredible. The light never went on and fooled the goal judge back there. And the Eagles, unfortunately, not able to score the goal. And uh, as a result, it's the 1-0 lead. Well, that shot is right over his shoulder. It hits the crossbar. It's inside the net and hits, comes off the other pipe and back out. Udine no, thought he scored, right? As he dropped his stick, he was putting his hands up. He knew he scored. Well, Clint Malarchuk picks up a penalty for San Diego, and the Eagles go on a power play. It's actually a, a roughing penalty called against the goaltender Malarchuk. So Salt Lake on their second power play. They're 0 for 1, although technically they should be 1 for 1, as San Diego just fly the puck deep into the Salt Lake zone, and Udine has to go back. A minute 30 left in the penalty as San Diego's DeGray winds it into the neutral zone, and Udine comes up with the puck and flips it right back in. Here's the play back of the goal, and Holder for the goals. Losing possession, Chernomaz is able to play it free, and Salt Lake's Forsland holds on. A minute 13 left in the penalty, 3.50 to go in the period. Here's the play at the left point, Udine again, shoots! Locked away in front, and Arneal on the right side breaks out of there with just about a minute left in the penalty, a minute to be exact, as the goals clear it right back deep into the Salt Lake zone. Controlling the puck is Udine and Dave, uh, good scoring chances for Salt Lake. Very good scoring of chances for Salt Lake, but Salt Lake's got to be very patient. They've got to wait till they get that high percentage shot. Here is the play now into the goal zone. Back after these, the defenseman Dineen icing is the call. Tuesday night at 7, beautiful women, handsome guys heat up the cold November night with an all-new edition of the Bikini Open right here on KXIV, Cable 12. And we also want to mention and thank our uh, people involved with the Golden Eagles Radio Network, uh, All Sports Radio 106.5, The Score, and KLO Radio in Ogden, Utah. They've done a fine job this year. The engineers every night, they've done a stellar job of, of bringing these broadcasts to the great fans of the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. Face-off will come up, circle to the right of the Eagles net, 320 
four left in the first of 40 seconds left in the penalty, and a good chance for Salt Lake to tie the game. Harkins jumps into the play, in across the line, works against the veteran Ruff, slows back behind the goal, has one hand on his stick trying to work it free. Ruff is checked, and Floyd leads it free in the center, and Nichols bangs it right back into the Salt Lake zone. 20 seconds to go in the penalty, and Guy able to work out of there for the Golden Eagles. Here's Kevin Guy, the former Vancouver Canuck, Able to clear it right back in. Eagles change up offensively. It uh, squirts back of the net where McCarthy recovers. He can't knock him off the puck. He centers one. Melrose pinching in. Clark a shot going wide. Great four checking into the goal zone at the point. Guy moving in. Fires. And a blocker save. Belarchuk. And the goals break back. And Lambert winds it to center. Eagles fail to score in the power play. Boy, Sandy McCarthy just did not finish off that play. If he just could have created more of a screen, we may have had him. Here's first Anderson ball. scoring. John Anderson from a sharp angle. He was tied up from the blue line all the way in by Todd Bros, and somehow found an angle behind Truffleoff to give the goals a 2-0 lead. John Anderson with his 10th goal of the year, the 35-year-old veteran for San Diego. As he holds on to the puck, he picks up the puck to the, to the left side of Trefiloff here, works around the defenseman uh, uh, behind the forward uh, Bros, and then he slips it by his surprise. Trefiloff, it looked like the puck went right between his legs. Anderson holding on, finally slides it in between Trefiloff's legs and into the goal. Peter Hankinson and Denny Lambert on the assist. Anderson's 10th of the year, 17.34 the time, and a 2 0 goals advantage. John Anderson, you may remember him way back with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Here's Robbie Nichols now in the clear. Ian Trefloff pokes it away. Goals trying to center one, and Clark breaks back. Right side for Wortman. Angles in across the line. Wortman moving in. Across for Cruz, and Malarchuk able to fall on top and holds on with San Diego up 2 to nothing in a very frustrating scoring play. Clint Malarchuk suffered a near-fatal injury two years ago with the Buffalo Sabres as Bob Francis not pleased, very frustrated about what's happened in the early going. But the San Diego goaltender, Dave, was involved in a very serious accident. Well, two years ago in a game, uh, I believe, against the Boston Bruins, there was a big scramble in front of the Buffalo net. Players got tangled up. The player skate literally cut Malarchuk's throat and only the quick actions by the Buffalo trainer who came out and stuck the, his finger into the artery that was profusely bleeding prevented uh, tragedy from coming in, uh, into that game at that point. It was Steve Tuttle of the St. Louis Blues who's now in the uh, Milwaukee with playing with the Milwaukee Admirals of the IHL. And it was Steve Tuttle who was, of course, played here at the Delta Center against the Golden Eagles last week as we have pushing and shoving on the far side. He was the player that actually got tangled up with the goaltender Malarchuk. John Anderson uh, on the far side, pushing with a Salt Lake player. Rick Dudley looks on at the San Diego's players bench. Boy, I'll tell you, John Anderson, like I mentioned with 35-year-old John Anderson, I had a chance to play against John when he was in Dallas, and a very solid performer. You know, it doesn't go out of his way to do anything extra special. It just he's there every day, and you can count on him. Minute 48 to go in the period. Uh, Francis knew it would be difficult here tonight. Very difficult without LeBeau and Hafey against a dangerous team like San Diego. Eagles strooch a little whipper wide of the target, and DeGray able to bounce it on edge to center, and Udine pokes it free for Chernamaz on the right side. Bumps it behind the goal's goal. Eagles in a fourth check. Back of the net, Gillingham ties up the San Diego player. Goals whipped along the far hash marks, and Arneal backhands it high in the air, deep into the Salt Lake zone. Going wide of the target, Melrose after it. Icing will be the call with the goals up by a score of two to nothing. Rick Dudley, who played in the National Hockey League with the Buffalo Sabres, looks on. Played uh, with the old Cincinnati Stingers of the World Hockey Association. Played and also coached the two and a half seasons with the Buffalo Sabres of the NHL. Never had a losing season as a head coach, uh, Dave, in uh, professional hockey. Well, I'll tell you, as a player, he was very feisty. He used to just roar up and down that left wing for Buffalo, and I played in a lot of contests against him. He's let that rub off with his teams, obviously, because they're playing well for him. Dave, either you're a young guy or these guys are older because you've played with half these guys on San Diego. Here's the play on the right wing side as the Eagles Harris trying to work it free. Would you be skating with these guys still? Uh, I don't know about that. I'm going to leave well enough alone. I looked at the birth certificate one day. I'm just going to say hey, I'm smart enough. Here's Forsla now in front for Stoken. A goal, a shot blocked off. And the goals did a great job of converging the slot with two black shirts right in front of Malarchuk to help him out. Here's a two-on-two -two break. The pass for Shank. 
Oh, and a good play by Guy to stay with him. Shank went down in a hurry. Here's Johnny Anderson behind the goal. Centers one. McDonough couldn't get a stick on it. No other choice but to clear it away by Harkins into the neutral zone. Eagles down two to nothing here in the first period. And San Diego clearing to the Salt Lake defense, caught by Cruz, losing possession. Checked away, however, is Hankinson off the stick of Wortman, and Salt Lake play at the center. Here's Gordonine, who won an Adams Cup with the Indianapolis Checkers in the Central Hockey League. Ahead for Hankinson. Left wing pass across for Lambert, and he dumps it in. Back of the goal now. Cruz losing possession momentarily, and Salt Lake break back. Here is Stoke at center for Clark. Five for uh, just down to the end of the period, and that's it. The buzzer sounds signaling the end. Up, uh, France is not too happy. Now we have a scrap. Paul Cruz and Denny Lambert in front of the Salt Lake bench. Cruz trying to throw a right hand. They're right at the blue line. Lambert trying to throw a right. The period is concluded. Cruz with a left hand. Trying to get through with that left. Lambert trying to fight back. They're nose to nose. All the players watching uh, as they scrap at the blue line. Now in front of the Salt Lake players bench. Cruz trying to get that arm free. Linesman now in a separate. They gave him enough time and realized that they weren't going to get the arms free. The fans don't like it. Paul Cruz from Merritt, British Columbia, and Dennis uh, Lambert for the San Diego goal. Well, the Golden Eagles need some type of aggressive play like that to turn this momentum around and put it back onto their side. Well, the score here, 2 nothing goals. We'll come back with our between periods activities in just a moment. Yes. Yes. Number 27. Got it. Okay. You're not going to show any of their goals? Okay. I guess the main thing would be as long as they just don't stand behind them. Just keep them moving would be the big thing. Keep them moving. Okay. Seven six shots on goal on the first. Okay, seven to six shots on goal, San Diego. the Delta Center in Salt Lake City. It's International Hockey League action of the San Diego Gulls, an independent team with a 13-0-1 mark, lead the Salt Lake Golden Eagles 2 to nothing. Welcome back, I'm Mike Barak, and boy, a tough game here tonight. Joining uh, me on the broadcast this evening, Dave Ferrecchi and Dave, the Eagles without Patrick LeBeau, without Sean Hafey, the goal is the best record in the league, no surprise, 2 nothing after one. Well, that experience is definitely paying off for San Diego so far, and it's just created a lot of problems in front of the net for goaltender Andrew Trefeloff, and the two goals that uh, San Diego scored so far, Trefeloff really not had much of a chance to make the save. Well, it's 2 nothing. There were only 13 shots on goal in the first period, seven by the San Diego Gulls, six for Salt Lake, so not really a, a big offensive period for either team. Well, both teams were quite tentative when the game started. The Eagles tried to play a physical style of play. What happened was they were rewarded with a penalty again. The nemesis all year long for the Golden Eagles' success has been penalties. And again, San Diego scores on their first opportunity on the power play. Well, there was a goal that wasn't in the first period, although Salt Lake trailing 2 to nothing. Alex Udine appeared to have given Salt Lake a 1-1 tie. A great shot by Udine over the top of the shoulder of Malarchuk. 
I'm convinced that that puck went in off the goal pipe and went off the crossbar and then came back out. Udine thought he scored the goal. The red light never went on, however, and as a result, the goals hold to the 2-0 lead. We'll come back with more here at the Delta Center. The scorer, San Diego 2 and Salt Lake nothing. We'll be right back in just a moment. You would have been doing this for a long time. It That's pretty long. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Okay. Hey, well, we got the cruise fight at the end of the period, so that'll be perfect. Uh, at least three and a half, probably somewhere around three and a half to 340. Water later. Okay, I'll definitely need it after this. Live from the Delta Center in Salt Lake City, it's International Hockey League action. The San Diego Gulls 2, the Salt Lake Golden Eagles nothing. Hi, Mike Barak. Welcome back to Salt Lake. And very tough period for Salt Lake. The Golden Eagles outshot 7-6 and down 2-0. Fans very excited about a late scrap with Paul Cruz of Salt Lake and Denny Lambert of San Diego. And a lot of people are confused about fighting and its role in professional hockey. Some new rules this year. And let's take a look at it and see how fighting is affecting professional hockey in the IHL. Now they, on the part, Evans trying to throw a throw right and Clark with a pair of laps. It continues to flail away. Oh, Evans throws a right hand. They've been called the Big Bad Golden Eagles, but maybe not for long. This year, the National and International Hockey Leagues have instituted several new rules to crack down on unnecessary roughness and fighting, including severe penalties for slashing and high-sticking violations. More important, any instigator of a fight will be automatically ejected, and although fighting is still allowed, slowly but surely, it is being eliminated. Because it's getting to be Americanized, where, uh, people down here don't know the game they don't understand gonna, why there's fighting right or something like that and why there's tough play all right yeah. just, and it, then, they uh, have to change the game so they understand it they don't take okay. the time enough to learn it and uh, they're just turning into like hockey hollywood or something like that where they want to they, they say they want to sell the product and and actually you're getting people leaving the rinks because of uh, taking out fighting. Here in Salt Lake City and throughout the United States, hockey has been criticized for allowing fighting and not appealing to the average family. The National Hockey League has been reluctant to completely ban fighting, fearing it will hurt attendance. Golden Eagle fans, for the most part, seem not to mind. I enjoy a good fight every now and then, but I don't like them to get real violent where someone gets hurt. Well, uh, yeah, I think it's exciting just to see them fight and watch them watch the thing up on the jumbotron, how they show the fighting stuff and stuff. Like that. I think it's okay. The physical part of the game is, is very important in hockey. Uh, a lot of the advantages of the team gains over another one is how physically they play. Some fans prefer the skating and shooting to the punching and banging. We don't come for the fighting. Um, we definitely come for the skating for the game. I don't like them personally. You know, I just wish they wouldn't they wouldn't have them. 
I don't li really like to see it in hockey, but uh, it's acceptable. Regardless, the rules are changing, and the transition for players has been difficult. Eagles player Paul Cruz believes fighting is part of hockey for a reason. But it's always been part of the game. You know, if you don't have uh, fighting, you're going to have high stick, and you're going to have uh, you can have more stick infractions. You're going to have uh, the the smaller players uh, skating around, sticking, sticking players in the face and getting away with it. Whatever the reason, some players feel that fights often have more bark than bite. I'd rather see a good fist to cuff. It lasts a minute and it's over. Everybody skates away. The, the, the battle's done and uh, every, the fans got a good rush where they're, they're cheering for their, uh, their player that they want to win the fight. And uh, the players don't really get hurt too much. Maybe a pride a little bit if they get knocked down. While fighting continues in the sport of hockey, the vast majority of hockey fans still prefer the skating and scoring skills of a rich Chernomaz rather than the punching and beating that has characterized hockey in the past. Well, I think that's what the biggest problem has been is that uh, people relate hockey to fighting right away and, and once they come uh, a couple times and realize the skill and the finesse that's involved and they learn to appreciate more what the players are doing rather than just uh, reading the paper and uh, seeing two guys dropping their gloves in the newspaper clipping. Saturdays, nor any other night, might not be all right, as fighting in hockey slowly fades as an important part of hockey's tradition. Well, there you have a look at uh, professional hockey and at its best. Uh, some people like the fighting, others don't. Uh, obviously, many of the players in the Golden Eagles like uh, uh, fighting in the game of hockey. They feel it's been a part of the game for a long, long time. Paul Cruz likes it. He was involved in a scrap at the end of the first period. The San Diego Gulls with the best record in the International League against the Salt Lake Golden Eagles, a depleted team without Sean Hafey, without Patrick LeBeau. We'll have more during our intermission. It's 2 nothing goals after one. And we'll be right back in just a moment. How's that? Okay. Brian. 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 I can't even hear him. He's busy. Talk a little bit about uh, uh, the aggressive style that the Eagles have to play to completely change this game around. They've got to play aggressive. They've How about just... playing in Milojevic's face, getting his face, creating some havoc in the slot, that kind of a thing? Such a good defense that they have out there. With you know that they have to they have to create havoc in front. They create confusion, create turnovers that will result in, in high percentage shots and good things. Okay. But he's going to tell us what to do. Yes. Scoring summary, okay, okay, okay. Are you gonna have any highlights? Are there highlights? Oh, you're gonna show both of them, okay. Oh, great, okay. San Diego goals over the Salt Lake Golden Eagles, the top farm team of the Calgary Flames, 2-0 at the end of 20 minutes of play. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Mike Barrack, uh, joined by former Golden Eagle Dave Herakasi. Dave, 2-0 goals, 7-6 to shots on goal in the first period. Well, I'll tell you, it's been some aggressive play by the Golden Eagles. It's kept this game just knotted at 2-0 because the Golden Eagles on Wednesday night played with little forechecking at all, and tonight, Though they haven't been able to get any high percentage goal scoring opportunities yet, I think it will pay off as the game goes on. Well, the first goal for San Diego was a power play goal. They're first in the league in power play advantages, and it was this uh, setup to give the goals the lead. Oh, a great shot from the point by Deneen. It was redeflected by Lamaru between the legs of a surprise uh, goaltender Trefilov for the Golden Eagles. Yeah, it was uh, very difficult on the deflection. And then a little bit later, John Anderson worked against uh, Todd Brost and was able to find a light opening. Well, John Anderson got control of that puck again. He slid the puck between the legs of a surprise Trefilov. Trefilov not really being able to have any opportunity. 
Well, the uh, goal scoring has mentioned Mitch Lamoureux, the former Philadelphia Flyer and Pittsburgh Penguin from Gordonin and Scott Arneal. And then John Anderson from Peter Hankinson and Denny Lambert. That an even strength goal. The goal's up by a score of two to nothing. That's the story here at the end of 20 minutes of play. Dave, what do the Eagles have to do to turn things around? Well, I think the Eagles definitely got to play a little more aggressive. They've got to get that puck thrown in deep into the San Diego zone, get control of it, create havoc when they have that opportunity in front of Malarchuk. That'll create turnovers, and that will also create high percentage good goal-scoring opportunities for the Eagles. they got to get in Malarchuk's face. Well, Malarchuk, it was evident in that first period when there was scrambles in front, and on that shot that I thought was a goal by Udine, he didn't see the puck and it was over his shoulder into the net. That's the key for the Golden Eagles. All right, that's the story. Two to nothing. A lot of activities coming up at the Delta Center next week. Kansas City in town and the Blades on November 20th, next Friday night. The first 3,000 fans receive a free souvenir. Golden Eagle hockey puck. That's always fun. And they'll play Kansas City also the following Monday night. So a lot of activity here at the Delta Center. Always fun. You got to love those free hockey pucks, Golden Eagle logo and things such as that. Well, that's been a traditional souvenir throughout the years in hockey and I know when I was growing up as a kid I couldn't wait to, when my dad took me to a hockey game and I had a chance to get a puck. Well in the old days they used to throw pucks up into the stands. The players used to be a little bit more generous. They're not like that anymore. How come? I don't know. We talked about that uh, last game that, uh, you know, uh, when I was playing that uh, we always did that. I kind of stayed on the ice a little later and then I always had a few uh, fans out there that always asked me to get them a puck and I always tried to. Well, the uh, fans love those freebies. And again, next Friday night, Kansas City at the Delta Center. They have free skating after the games now at the Delta Center. Lots of things happening. But here tonight, the Golden Eagles trail the goals 2 to nothing. We'll come back with more here. The Eagles in San Diego in just a moment. Hello? Hello? Hello, Brian? I can't, uh, he hasn't said anything yet. Yes, yes. How did that go? Yes. Yes. I didn't have, I just got the headset on, just as, okay. Okay, Every, everything's fine, uh, Brian? Okay, we only have 223. I'll give a KXIV uh, promo. I see the newest member of the Golden Eagles, the new mascot, is having some fun with the fans on the far side. That's about the only fun they've had for the fans here tonight with San Diego leading two to nothing. I'm Mike Barrack, joined by former Golden Eagle, former uh, California Golden Sale, Cleveland Baron, St. Louis Blue, Dave Herakasi. KXIV presents exclusive televised coverage of Utah High School and Athletic and Association and First Security oh. Bank 3A in football or in 4A football championships. Catch all the action this Thursday, beginning at 5.30. And then next Monday night, KXIV has two hours of fun for the whole family with the Walt Disney cartoon classic, The Sword in the Stone. All well, the Golden Eagles making their appearance on the ice. We're glad you're joining us on the Golden Eagles radio network along with KXIV, Channel 14 tonight. Day of the Eagles are a team without their two offensive leaders, Sean Hafey, Patrick LeBeau, 
talked to Bob Francis before the game, and he said, this is a chance for Todd Harkins. Harkins, the second leading point scorer last year. He's very upset, didn't get called up to the Calgary Flames. Some of the players feel they should deserve an opportunity. This is their chance. If they want to get to Calgary, they want to play in the NHL. This is their opportunity. They're going to get the opportunity with Salt Lake missing those two players here tonight. Well, there's no question, you know, every one of the players, that's their, the reason why they're here in Salt Lake is they want to make it to the NHL and have a nice career in the NHL. But they've got to perform. And uh, Sean Hafey and uh, Patrick LeBeau have done a great job so far. They've been the leaders offensively for this team, uh, with Rich Chernum as, of course. Uh, but Rich is out there tonight uh, trying to pick up the slack of the loss of those two offensive stars. And that's where, uh, you know, I'm sure Bobby Francis before the game talked to all the players and said, you know, a good indication of how you get to the NHL is, you know, you know, put forth when you're uh, when you're on the ice. LeBeau and Hafey have done that all year long. And they've been rewarded getting that chance uh, tomorrow night. They'll both suit up against Tampa Bay. And, and, and I'm sure they're going to be very excited about that opportunity. Yeah, Sean Hafey, that will be his first time in the National Hockey League. Patrick LeBeau has played in the past with the NHL. The Eagles look to Rich Turnham as he is the leading scorer right now with 12 points during this season in points in 13 of 14 games. In the second period, the Eagles. White home jerseys will move from left to right, and we're underway here in the second period. And Kevin Wortman, who led Salt Lake in defenseman scoring last year, able to work out of there and lifts it high in the air. Again, the Eagles just deciding to play it deep into the goals territory in San Diego, having possession. Gordon Ean, at his own defense, plays the puck. He's 29 years of age. His brother Kevin plays in the NHL. His brother Peter played two years ago in San Diego and holds the puck once more in his own set. Eagles uh, Clark knocks down a San Diego player, and Perry Anderson breaks out of there. Played parts of two seasons in Salt Lake. Long shot. Stick saved by Trefeloff and up into the stands. Stoppage of play with 41 seconds gone into the second period. Goals on goals by Lamaru and John Anderson leading two to nothing. San Diego, their defense, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, here we get a shot of Trefeloff. Trefeloff tonight has had kind of a tough luck because he's really not been able to make the saves. They haven't been, uh, they've been hard shots and, and ones that are difficult for a goaltender. Starting to talk about the defense, Trefeloff's not lost at the Delta Center, coming in 4-0 with a scintillating 2.25 goals against. He suffered his first professional loss last uh, Saturday, 4-1 in Phoenix against the Roadrunners. Eagles have a line of Gillingham up front with Strooch and Chernemaz as the goals try and work it in front, but tipped away for Rich Chernemaz out of his own end. Left wing for Gillingham, poked away, and the goals break back. John Anderson in, hinge shot to flex one. Last year, Anderson had a big season in the American Hockey League. 95 points with the New Haven Nighthawks. Here's a pay, play for David Strooch and across the line. In on goal, loses the defense in. Alarchuk, a pass and rebound. And it's chopped wide by Gillingham. At the right point, Guy for Solik spins it behind the goal. Gillingham holds on. Wrap around right through the goal crease. Nobody home. Chernemaz now trying to center one. Bounces the free for the forward Strooch and San Diego break back. The pass to center off the mark and Guy able to smack it right back off the backboards into the goal zone. Here is Salt Lake Forslund trying to muscle it free. Forslund now back of the net, holding on. Centers in front for Wurtman. He just missed by a whisker and it caroms off the boards all the way into the uh, Salt Lake zone. Excellent pressure by the Golden Eagles at this point. Some great shots, Jernemez, uh, the Harkins, they're doing a good job so far out there. Here's the play on the right side. Dillable David St. Pierre, right side for Tim Harris into the San Diego zone. The Gray keeps him on the far side and behind the net, not allowing him to get a centering pass off. Goals clear it deeper to the Salt Lake Dome. This should be an icing. Workman after icing is the call with 2.10 gone. Second period goes to Eagles, nothing. Well, I'll tell you, it's very evident at the start of this period the Eagles have stepped it up, that notch that I talk about. And what I really mean is you're playing at a certain level throughout the game, and then all of a sudden the players on the bench, they all come together and they say, let's elevate our play one more time, do things that are extra. Bobby Francis just giving his words of encouragement to his players. I mean, they're coming along, and uh, I'll tell you, they just keep pouring that pressure on. We'll try and get a shot later of Slava Lerner on the Salt Lake bench. He's assisting Bob Francis here tonight. Actually an assistant coach for the Czech national team a couple of years ago and is a roaming 
coach for the Flames and the Golden Eagles here in Salt Lake tonight. Here's the play on the right side. David St. Pierre able to break into the neutral zone. Larry Floyd chops it right back into Salt Lake territory. And the Eagles gain possession. Well, the Eagles right now, it's critical that they, they just play smart, play aggressive, but smart. Here's the play on the left wing side into the Salt Lake zone. P St. Pierre on left wing, breaks out of there, falls down. It's only his third Eagles game and he clears it in. Hasn't played a lot and it looked a little bit nervous on that play. Well, he looked a little bit rusty, but he hustled and he got that puck in there. Here's Arneal, backs it up into the Salt Lake zone and Darren Stolk has to go back. He's 24 years of age. Last year, two goals for Salt Lake, scored his first this season Wednesday night. Here is Gordinine once more. This guy is playing a lot on defense. Harkins now steaming in for the forward McCarthy. Now Harkins, back of the goal. Wheeling, one hand on his stick, centers one, and tipped away. The goals clear it down the ice. Back after Kevin Guy. And as he touches it, icing is the call with 3.19 gone. Second period, I San Diego see. two, and Salt Lake nothing. This is Salt Lake Golden Eagles hockey. Look at that crazy guy. Mike Barak alongside Dave Ferrecasi, San Diego two and Salt Lake nothing. Face off will be deep into the goal zone. McCarthy with Brose and Harkins as the Troika up front. Here's the play now along the far side. Harkins trying to muscle it free. Whipped by the goals on the left wing side and the forward Anderson into the Salt Lake zone. Perry Anderson stops on a dime, centers for Deneen, Traffle off, a sprawling save. And it is Perry Anderson now on the far side. Works against Brose, who played in San Jose last year, back in. And Trefloff gets a piece of that. He went from his forehand to his backhand. Trefloff says no. Eagles bottled up for the moment. Perry Anderson now in front of the goal. Trefloff falls on top. Great scoring chances for the team in the black, white, and red. Andre Trefloff saying, I've seen enough here in this last 30 seconds. Good pressure put on. Good shot by the need for the point. A good sprawling save by Trefloff. Good hustle by Perry Anderson, just causing all that havoc in the Golden Eagles zone. There's Perry Anderson behind the net. Comes out in front, a good backhand. Trefiloff able to smother it. Excellent opportunity for San Diego. Andre Trefiloff, 23 years of age. Born in Kirovo, Russia. He spent two years in the Russian Army, believe it or not. In addition to his years with the Moscow Dynamo team. Here's the play on the left wing side. Eagles trying to work it, but San Diego trying to center one for Shank. Melrose parades the slot, leads Chernomaz, and the Golden Eagles, Udine, leads a head uh, band pass for Strooch. Here's Strooch for Salt Lake. Backs it up to the side of the goal, now into the corner for Gillingham. Back of the net. Strooch knocked down. Can't believe. No calls. McSween hauled him down, and the referee, Wilkins, watches him passively. And Salt Lake clear it right back in. But the Eagles can't get breaks, Dave, to get a power play of their own. Boy, they need that break. It's big for Golden Eagles at this point in the contest. Here is the clearing pass deep into the Salt Lake zone. Udine whips it on the opposite side to Gray at the right point. Able to hold it in. Clears it along the boards to the side of the goal. Gillingham trying to chip it free. Juan free to the top of the circle. Holder holds it in. Right wing side to Gray. His shot, Chernomath beautifully intercepts. Clears ahead for Strooch. Out of his reach. Now Strooch is a rookie. Gillingham and only a second year pro. So some youngsters along with the veteran Chernomaz down the right side. Here is the Eagles captain. Shoots one. Caught by Malarchuk. Eagles change up on the fly. And to Gray. Able to play it. Eagles force land all over him. And on the left wing side it's Larry Floyd. Arching into the Salt Lake zone. Poke check at the last moment. They scramble forward at center. And cleared right back into the Salt Lake territory where... Tim Harris drops it back for his own defense, and the Eagles to gain possession. They clear it off the boards deep into the San Diego territory. Good hustle, the Eagles trying to get some going. Uh, defenseman Darren Stoke trying to make that wide, big wide pass. That's a tough pass. Here is DeGray at center ice, Sarneal. Trefloff way out to play it. He then takes the player out of the, I don't believe, I think he's gonna get called for a penalty there. The goals clear it into the neutral zone. And it looks like Trefloff's going to get called for it. No, no, it's against San Diego. As Trefloff 
into the Salt Lake territory. It didn't look like it should have been a penalty against Salt Lake. Not at all. You can Scott O'Neill's just trying to check the puck off a of Trevlov's stick. And the referee's right there, and he try he interprets it as a charging call, I believe, on Scott Arneal for San Diego. This is the break that we are calling. Bobby Francis trying to strategize with his team. He's looking out there trying to figure out who, which players he's got on the ice and wh who's going to be his big plus, get that goal to knock this game, uh, I mean, bring this game to a 2-1. It is Scott Arneal, the charging penalty at 550. We have some scores in the International League. Kansas City over Fort Wayne, 4-2. The Blades won the Turner Cup last year. Milwaukee and Indianapolis tied at two after two. The Admirals, another independent team. And also Cincinnati, an independent team over Kalamazoo, 5-1 in the third. The uh, team uh, Kalamazoo struggling in Cleveland and Phoenix scoreless at the Veterans Coliseum tonight in the IHL. Kalamazoo has been struggling. The independent teams, all of them, Cincinnati, San Diego, Milwaukee, and boy, I'll tell you what, uh, Fort Wayne, they've all played well this season. Here's the play back of the goal. Eagles trying to work it free. Back to the left wing side. Melrose for Wortman. Checked away. Salt Lake on the power of play, but it is a chance for Nichols. He scores! Robbie Nichols. And he's excited about it. He's an animated player, jumping up and down. A shorthanded goal. This guy scored eight of those a couple of years ago to lead the IHL. And bang, it's 3 0 goals. Reminiscent of the Wednesday night game. Here go the goals again with that good shot. Robbie Nichols just winds up at the top of the circle, puts it right off of Trefilov's stick and up into the top part of the net. Time of the goal, 6-15 uh, into the period. Great shot up high. Oh, a real good shot. Nichols again, uh, another shorthanded goal, and Nichols just capitalized. He gets that loose puck and just drifts it over the top of Trefilov. Robbie Nichols gets the glad hands. He led the IHL in penalty minutes, had over 400 Back in 1984-85 with Kalamazoo, he's become a big goal scorer in this league, and the goals lead three to nothing. Here are the Eagles on the attack. Wortman moving in, and he flips it right back behind the goal. His sixth goal of the year for Robbie Nichols, and the goals have the lead. Quick shot right on, and Millarchuk to save, and now pushing and shoving with Gillingham. Holder, and now we have pushing and shoving. Gillingham wants to get in the middle of it. Boy, uh, Gillingham just trying to play aggressive in front of Millarchuk in the San Diego net. And uh, right away, the referee has to get in front of him. Gillingham and some of the San Diego goal defensemen get engaged in a little bit of a scuffle. Well, the score here, 3 nothing goals. We'll take a break as we want to sort these out. This is Salt Lake Golden Eagles hockey. Oh, no problem. I... Sure. Another thought. Okay. It is tough. Well, Todd Gillingham picks up a slash on that scrum behind the goal. 6.43, the time of the penalty. San Diego in their third power play. This will nullify the last 107 on Salt Lake's man advantage and get San Diego a power play, Dave. Yeah, uh, with only a minute and three seconds left on the San Diego penalty, they'll have the advantage here in some 52 seconds. Well, the Eagles were hoping at least for a split. The Gulls wanted a split here. They won Wednesday night. And the Gulls are a happy team at their bench right now. They have not lost in regulation all year long. I checked with the International Hockey League in regards to the longest winning streak. The record 18 is Slava Lerner on the Salt Lake bench. He coached the Czechoslovakian national team as an assistant, helping out Bob Francis. We talked about that earlier, but the Gulls looking to tie the record of 18 wins set by Peoria a couple of years ago, consecutive wins, but they won't give them that streak because they did lose one game in a shootout. So although technically they've not lost a game in regulation, they will not get the all-time winning streak because of that shootout loss. Here's the play on left wing. Coles wind it to center. The team's right now in a four-on-four. Four. Lots of open ice as Harkins able to clear it uh, behind the net for Harris. Malarchuk, the goaltender, actually takes Harris out of the play. And uh, the veteran, DeGray, able to clear it right back in. Here's Truffleoff sets it up for his own defense. And Andre has now given up seven goals in his last two games. That's unlike this uh, young goaltender. Here's the plane across the line. Harkins for Harris. He missed the net. Boy, Tim Harris was set up beautifully, and he fired wide. Not going to get too many scoring chances like that. Here's Harris. Now, 
Bottled up by the defenseman holder, centers one. Mitch Lamoureux plays it. Arneal out of the penalty box, and now it's a power play for San Diego for 48 seconds. Wortman rims it on the boards outside the line, and for the first portion of this, the Eagles get it deep into San Diego territory. Well, I'll tell you, as you mentioned, uh, Harris, when he gets that loose puck, you can't miss that opportunity. On the other end of the ice, when Rob Nichols, the experienced player, and had that shot, he made it count. Here's McSween, able to flip it in. There's a big difference between these two teams right now. Here is Robbie Nichols, slides it back to the left wing side for McSween. Holding, spinning, fans on it, whiffs on it. Still is able to hold on at the right point. Denise plays to the left wing point. McSween, shooting, stick save, trap off, and they puck the flex end over in, up into the stands. Robbie Nichols on his knees, saying to Mark Wilkins, hey, there should be a penalty against Soul Lake. What's he complaining about? The goals lead three to nothing. Bob Francis trying to figure out uh, what it's going to take to turn things around right now, and Salt Lake coach got to be very frustrated. I'll tell you that Robbie Nichols creating a lot of problems in front of Andre Treflov the net, and uh, you know he, he creates that good screen, and McSween and Lindy Ruff and all the defensemen they got that good low hard shot from the point. Nothing but problems when you have those good experienced players on the point. Robbie Nichols was part of a hotline last year with Dmitry Kabartlenov and Len Hackborn. They formed the big line of the IHL. Here's a play at the point. Rough a shot. That deflects wide. You may recall Kabartlenov had 60 goals for the goals last year. He's actually playing now with the Boston Bruins, along with former Golden Eagle Darren Banks. Gillingham out of the penalty box. Teams are at even strength, but uh, the goals take over back of the goal. Here is the forward, Perry Anderson, trying to center one, but Udine breaks it up on left wing, plays for Gillingham, and a break down the right side. In on goal, Gillingham, what a play by Gordon Deneen to poke it off his stick. That is textbook defensive hockey. Here's Gillingham now, shooting one in front for the Eagles, Udine. Udine waltzing to the side of the goal, now back of the San Diego cage. Udine over skates, trying to center one. Now Udine gets away from a San Diego player, but Denny Lambert on left wing. Boy, Deneen saved a goal, at least a great scoring chance, as he took it right off the stick of Gillingham, Dave, into the San Diego zone. Well, Gillingham caught Gillingham, trying to make things happen out there, but again, Alexander Udine trying to get that loose puck over to Gillingham so he could get that good shot. But those experienced defensemen for San Diego, they play their position so well, it's tough. Well, uh, what came up is Gillingham down the right side, the old sweep check. Well, that's one of the biggest plays in hockey. Uh, it's always been, and uh, Gillingham couldn't control that puck. Dave, uh, it's a lost art, really. You don't see that too often with players using their stick instead of the body. Well, I'll tell you, the stick and the blocking of shots, people don't do that anymore. They used to do it in the past, but it's a lost art. As and the hip checks, too, right? Yeah, we haven't got any Leo Boyvins playing the game nowadays, and nobody hits with Bob the hip. Bob Plager? Bobby Plager used to crunch guys. Gilles Murat that I played with in California could do it well. Here's a play to the right of the goal. Players hated to be on the other end of those hip checks, though. Dave, you never were, were you? Well, I got hit one night in the Boston Garden by Terry O'Reilly with a hip check. <laughs> I tell you, I felt it for months. Here's a chance for Harrison on goal. Rolls it right through the goal crease. Here is the Forslund now behind the net for Tim Harris in a fourth check Harkins. And the goals to take over. Great fourth checking by the Golden Eagles right now. Bergman pinching to hold it in, but Anderson breaks back on right wing. Forslund gives him a little bit of a ride and then works in across the line, but it looked to be an offside. Eagles play in the center. Harkins just shoots it right back to the San Diego defense, and he goes off on the line change. Boy, the Eagles right now, they got to get something going positively. Here's a chance for the goals. They try and work it free for Shank. Back checking Harris, and he just flings it off the back of the linesman, Tim Brown. Here is a chance for McDonough. For Shank, shooting, and a bad save. Treffle off. Here's the play in front. Starikov winds up and shoots it wide, and it ricochets to center. Sergei Starikov played in the NHL with the New Jersey Devils. Here's the play on left wing. Across the line, Scott Arneal waltzing into the Salt Lake zone, but Wortman able to poke it free on the opposite wing. Three nothing, San Diego. We're oh. played over half this game. Here's a chance for Melrose in across the line. Charging it on goal, backhand over top of the goal, going for the short side, and it takes a San Diego bounce as Floyd leads on a two-man break. Here's a chance for Arneal, poked away. No penalty as a San Diego player taken out of the play. Sterikov flips it in, and back of the goal is Guy. For Salt Lake Nichols, centers in front. Floyd a shot, that hits the Melrose, bounces awry in Salt Lake's tournament as up the middle, breaks into the neutral zone, and 
Boy, the goals converged at center ice. Two players on Chernomaz before he could get moving. Uh, goals play absolutely great positional hockey, and that really makes it tough for a young team. Rick Dudley, the coach of the goals, doing a masterful job. This team hasn't lost this year. Here's, uh, in regulation, I should say, here's Cruz now. Knocked off the puck by Ruff. And then Dineen, twirling to the left of the goal, bounces it off the sideboards and all the way to center. It's Stoke on right wing, able to play it free and a chance for Cruz. 300 penalties for Salt Lake last year, 313. Here is Brose now in the fourth check. Clark rides a goal player, and that's what they need to do. If they're going to play in the offensive zone, they got to throw the body. Here is Ruff now in across the line, flips it in front for Cruz. Boy, he levels a guy, and he's going to get called for a penalty. Looked like a clean hit by Cruz, but as soon as the Eagles touch the puck, Mark Wilkins going to call a high stick on Paul Cruz. He looks back and says, who, me? And Wilkins says, yeah, you. I think all you're seeing is Wilkins right now as the play goes in behind the net and Cruz and Perry Anderson get tied up and Cruz got a little high with that stick and that's the reason that the penalty was called. Well, the score is San Diego three, so like nothing, Paul penalty Cruz so in the much. penalty box. We'll take a break here with the goals up two to nothing. This is Salt Lake Golden Eagles hockey. Penalty comes at 12, 17, second Jeez, what a joke. God. Well, that was deflected. He put a stick down, and that block carried off a stick and right up in yeah. the net. Don't you think the second goal by Nichols he could have stopped too? He looked like he was not a wide awake on it. The Eagles now 15 minutes in penalties. Cruz a high stick at 12-17. Goals in their fourth power play. They're one for three so far. And the Eagles with 15 minutes in penalties. This year have 565 goals trying to bounce it in front. And Trefloff able to fall on top. Good scoring chance for San Diego. Dave, 565 minutes in penalties in the early going. Six players with 10 or more minors in the early going as the goals worked it right off on the power play. A great shot from the point and tries to get redirected by Perry Anderson or John Anderson Bam. in front of the net. Trefloff again on the ice, sprawling, tries to make the good club man save. Could this team beat the National Hockey League team right now? No, I don't believe so. I really don't. Uh, they've got a good team, but they're not that good. Here's the play on the right wing, Cyan McDonough. Trying to work it free in front. Plays to the side of the goal, loose in front. And Trefloff able to fall on top with a couple of black shirts right in front of the goal. See